शिशिर वी कैन स्टार्ट Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's topic for uh, seminar is uh, pars plana vitrectomy, its indications and uh, complications. Uh, so, going back to history, uh, David Kastner uh, was first described uh, vitrectomy or removal of uh, vitreous body using an open sky technique in 1969. So, two years later, uh, Robert uh, Matchmer created first closed system vitrectomy setup, which enabled intraocular pressure control. Using 17 gauge instruments with a pars plana approach, the beginning of what became known as pars plana vitrectomy. Uh, in 1974, uh, Connor and Ralph uh, developed modern day three port vitrectomy system with dedicated ports for vitreous removal using a vitrectomy cutter, infusion of fluid to maintain IOP, and illumination of posterior segment using 20 gauge uh, instruments. So subsequent uh, innovations include the development of trocar cannula system for insertion of instruments uh, by uh, Robert Matchmer and uh, and Dyson, uh, 23 gauge instrument by Golam Payman and uh, Klaus Ekdart, uh, 25 gauge instrumentation uh, was developed by uh, Lido Fuji and Eugene and 27 gauge instrument by uh, Yusuke Oshima and colleagues more recently in 2000, uh, 2010. Uh, so basic uh, setup of uh, vitrectomy includes vitrectomy machine, uh, surgical microscope and wide angle viewing system and infusion cannula uh, which is used to maintain intraocular pressure set by vitrectomy machine. So you can uh, you can vary the intraocular uh, pressure depending on the depending on your need. So uh, generally, it, initially it will be kept uh, kept in the range of uh, 25 to 30 millimeters of uh, mercury while starting the surgery. And uh, endoillumination light source for visualization of posterior segment, uh, including uh, vitreous and retina. And vitrectomy cutter, uh, which is used for vitreous removal, aspiration, peeling, and cutting membranes, among other functions. So coming to gauges, uh, the gauges refers to the size of instrument with higher number corresponding to smaller instrument. So 20 gauge is having uh, 0.9 uh, millimeter diameter, 23 gauge is having 0 0.6, 25 is 0 0.5 and 27 is 0.4 mm diameter. So more the uh, increase in the number, the size of the diameter goes on reducing. So when uh, vitrectomy was first introduced, 20 gauge instrumentation was the most commonly used. So sclerotomy is created with 20 gauge instruments would need to be sutured while seldomly used nowadays. There are still indications for which 20 gauge is necessary uh, in cases of uh, removal of uh, retained lens material and uh, removal of intraocular uh, foreign bodies using uh, intraocular foreign body forceps. So these are uh, these are few of the indications for 20 gauge uh, vitrectomy. Uh, so, in addition, patients with 20 gauge sutured wounds may have a decreased uh, rate of endophthalmitis uh, compared to patients undergoing smaller gauge uh, vitrectomy surgery. Uh, because in smaller gauge, uh, uh, we are not suturing, so there may be there might be potential uh, for uh, uh, infections uh, post operatively. Uh, so, a finding possibly related to hypotonia and wound leakage more commonly seen in uh, sutureless surgery. Uh, so previous studies have found that endophthalmitis rates uh, 12 to 28 times higher with 25 gauge vitrectomy compared to 20 gauge uh, vitrectomy. So although endophthalmitis rates were lower in both groups. Uh, however, subsequent studies have found similar rates of endophthalmitis with 20 gauge and 25 gauge uh, vitrectomy. Uh, so this is the image uh, showing standard uh, three-port uh, pars plana vitrectomy. So infusion cannula is uh, 
placed generally in the inferior uh, inferior temporal uh, quadrant where superior nasal and superior uh, temporal quadrant uh, cannulas are used uh, uh, interchangeably with for uh, vitreous uh, cutter as well as uh, endo elimination so coming to weaving system so visualization of posterior segment is critical to performing uh, parse planar vitrectomy so the advent of uh, uh, wide angle weaving systems in 1980s has revolutionized vit vitroretinal surgery by enab enabling a panoramic view of posterior segment thereby enabling safer and more efficient surgery there are two main categories of uh, surgical viewing system that is non contact and contact lens system so both require uh, use of an operating microscope so generally wide angle we say when uh, the uh, when it is covering more than 115 uh, degree of the angle so uh, so there is an example of contact lens is the advanced uh, visual instruments or we can call it as avi system uh, which offers two different handle lenses one with a 68 degree view to the uh, equator and one with a 130 degree uh, view till the ora serrata so this wide angle uh, uh, wide angle uh, uh, visualization is uh, very important while uh, while performing uh, peripheral uh, uh, peripheral vitrectomy or ba uh, base shaving and to uh, detect all the possible breaks which are generally uh, located out, uh, anterior to the equator so in those system uh, in those cases wide angle viewing plays a important role and uh, the avi system requires coupling of lens to the cornea with uh, viscoelastic and an assistant to hold the lens in place while the eye is maintained in the primary position it is usually used with leica scopes <coughs> so two popular non contact viewing systems are uh, zees uh, resight and oculus biome uh, wide angle viewing system so the Z, the zeiss lens requires use of a zeiss microscope whereas oculus lens typically used with uh, leica scopes but can adapt to fit to zeiss microscope as well so both lens system do not require coupling to the corneal surface but viscoelastic is placed on the corneal surface to help maintain a, a clear view uh, and in addition there is no assistant is needed because they are attached to the microscope itself so for macular surgery special contact lenses such as uh, dark flat vitrectomy lens enable higher resolution and magnification weaving the posterior pole for more delicate maneuver such as uh, epiretinal membrane and internal uh, limiting membrane peeling so here you don't need uh, uh, you don't necessarily need wide angle because uh, uh, your uh, uh, point of interest is on posterior pole in uh, these cases such as erm removal and uh, macular hole surgery so there you need higher resolution and magnification so to identify the uh, thin membranes and to peel it uh, peel it off from retina so however there are non contact uh, macular lenses which also exist such as uh, with the uh, zeiss uh, resight system so coming to instruments so trocar cannula system for placing um, ports so they are also available in various gauges as discussed earlier 20 fan 27 gauge uh, and uh, endo illuminators which are available in focal and wide angle illumination so the light source for endo illumination is uh, xenon and uh, led light source and there are uh, chandelier lighting systems which are placed uh, using trocar cannula system that enable bimanual surgery without having to devote one hand to holding a traditional uh, endo illuminator so uh, generally as i mentioned the superior nasal and uh, superior temporal ports uh, two ports which are uh, used interchangeably for uh, uh, vitreous cutter and uh, even endo illuminator Uh, so here we can make an extra additional port and uh, we can place the uh, this chandelier light system we can fix to that port so uh, here what happens is uh, without using an additional endo illuminator we can uh, perform uh, we can perform surgery using two forceps or two any other instruments for uh, in cases which are requiring uh, by manual uh, uh, maneuvers so uh, light source can also be fixed uh, uh, fixed to additional uh, this thing uh, sclerotomy so coming to vitreous cutter which are available with cut speeds up to and exceeding 10000 uh, cuts per minute so uh, generally if you uh, if you increase the uh, cut rate and uh, reduce the uh, vacuum uh, 
uh, it helps in a more efficient uh, removal of uh, vitreous and it also prevents the uh, unnecessary traction on the uh, retina. So uh, uh, the general thumb rule for uh, uh, vitrectomy is uh, uh, to keep more uh, increased uh, cut rate and to reduce the vacuum so as to reduce uh, complications. And uh, coming to forceps, uh, for grasping membranes, including epiretinal membrane, internal limiting membrane, and proliferative membranes from PVR and diabetes, etc. So there are uh, ILM forceps, grease haber, max grip, serrated forceps. And uh, coming to scissors for cutting retinal bands and traction membranes. Uh, so these are available in horizontal, vertical, and angled uh, design, which are used depending on the need. Coming to membrane scrapers for lifting an edge of the membrane. So here, uh, a finesse flex loop and tano scraper pick can be used. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, to do ILM, uh, to do ERM or ILM peeling, first we have to create a flap, uh, and then we can use the forceps to peel off the membrane. So, to lifting an edge of that membrane, these uh, finesse flex loop, tano scraper, or pick is used. So th these are used to create a flap. Then. Uh, holding the edge of a flap, we can uh, remove remove the remaining membrane. Uh, Which one do uh, we use, uh, Which one do we use uh, here? Uh, sir, we use uh, pick, uh, pick, sir. Finesse loop also we Finesse. use. Okay. Finesse loop is by Alcon. So, oh. so we stroke it on the retina. So usually it will uh, create a flap of ILM. Uh, extrusion uh, cannulas, uh, which are used to drain uh, subretinal fluid, perform fluid air exchange, and uh, disperse fluid resting on the retinal surface. So, example is uh, soft tip uh, uh, cannula and uh, back flush cannula. And coming to diathermy, so diathermy is used for providing uh, uh, hemostasis, marking the border of uh, retinal tears, and creating uh, drainage retinotomies. So, uh, in cases of uh, regmatogenous uh, retinal detachment, before performing uh, fluid air exchange, we, we have to, it is important to mark the borders of uh, uh, retinal tears or bricks because uh, uh, once, the, once the fluid air exchange is done, it will be difficult to locate all the bricks. So, we may miss a uh, few bricks. So, if you mark with uh, diathermy, so you will get that whi whitish uh, reaction on the borders of uh, the retinal bricks. Which, uh, which after fl uh, fluid air exchange also, which will be helpful in uh, uh, visualizing the break and later uh, doing the laser photocoagulation. And uh, other uh, instances are when uh, when there is a, a hemorrhage, uh, hemorrhage due to uh, uh, due to leakage uh, from the vessels, uh, more commonly seen in uh, diabetic uh, uh, diabetic TRD cases. So there also diathermy is used to provide hemostasis and. Uh, uh, to drain the SRF, especially in cases of uh, regmatogenous RD, uh, we will create a drainage uh, retinotomy. Uh, for that also, diathermy is used. And endolaser uh, is used to perform laser uh, photocoagulation intraoperatively. So it is also available in straight and uh, curved designs. So uh, most commonly, like uh, to seal off the uh, breaks and drainage retinotomies, we use uh, laser photocoagulation. And uh, uh, after uh, after the surgery of uh, diabetic uh, TRD, also we do uh, pan retinal uh, photocoagulation. And uh, phragmatome, uh, it is used for uh, pars plana lensectomy. In uh, cases of uh, nucleus uh, nucleus drop or any retained uh, lens material, we can use this uh, uh, phragmatome, phaco phragmatome. Now coming to indications, so uh, vitrectomy is uh, required in the cases with the macular hole, uh, epiretinal membranes, vitromacular traction, vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, vitreous hemorrhage generally uh, we do if it is non-resolving. Uh, we say uh, we say any vitreous hemorrhage to be non-resolving even after the medical management, uh, even after one month if there is no reduction in uh, uh, in the vitreous hemorrhage size. So then we term it as uh, uh, non-resolving vitreous hemorrhage. So in such cases, uh, we we will under uh, we will uh, plan for uh, vitrectomy surgery uh, and uh, tractional uh, retinal detachment and regmatogenous uh, retinal detachment, uh, which are very common uh, indications for vitrectomy and uh, uh, even endophthalmitis. So 
uh, as far as endophthalmitis is concerned, if patient is uh, presenting with uh, visual acuity less than uh, uh, less than hand movements uh, at the presentation itself, then we will directly take for uh, vitrectomy surgery. Uh, if patient is having visual acuity better than uh, uh, hand movements, such as like counting fingers, so then we can give intra intravitreal antibiotics. Then uh, then subsequently we can plan for. Uh, uh, vitrectomy surgery if if it, if uh, patient is not improving so uh, then uh, dislocated uh, intraocular lens and uh, intraocular foreign body and refractory macular edema and even for uh, vitreous biopsy uh, coming to regmatogenous uh, retinal detachment so uh, many simple uh, regmatogenous rd can be treated successfully by uh, scleral buckling techniques pars planar vitrectomy has greatly improved the prognosis for uh, more complex uh, detachment so with uh, with uh, improved instrumentations uh, with advancement in uh, uh, instruments and even weaving system so even simple rd uh, regmatogenous rd can uh, directly be tre uh, uh, treated with uh, uh, ppv having a good uh, success rate as technologies have, uh, uh, many surgeons now feel that morbidity and success rates are better with vitrectomy for all pseudophakic and aphakic uh, RD uh, and for those that would otherwise require uh, external drainage of SRF. So some advocate primary vitrectomy for virtually all cases. So uh, when uh, retinal breaks, uh, these are now uh, absolute indications where uh, PPV is only the uh, management in these cases. Uh, where retinal breaks cannot be visualized as a result of hemorrhage or vitreous debris or posterior capsule opacity, IOL edge effects or vitrectomy is crucial to provide an adequate retinal view, scleral buckley carries a high risk of failure if any breaks are missed. So we have to be very sure that, uh, uh, we have to be very sure uh, to locate the break preoperatively then uh, in simple cases we can go for scleral buckling if any if you are uh, suspecting more breaks or uh, media clarity is uh, not good then it, it is always better to uh, treat with uh, pars planar vitrectomy and uh, so and if you if you feel that uh, uh, the large breaks which are unlikely to be closed by scleral buckling such as giant tear large posterior breaks in presence of pvr uh, then again it is managed with uh, ppv uh, so these are few indications for uh, PPV uh, in the uh, as a diagrammatic view. Uh, giant retinal tear uh, in the first case and a large uh, posterior tear. So here you can see and uh, severe uh, uh, PVR changes and tractional uh, uh, retinal detachment, which is uh, which is involving the foil region also. So these are few indications. Uh, coming to basic steps. So uh, we insert trochas in the pars plana, three to four mm from the uh, limbus. So generally in uh, uh, pseudophakic, we insert uh, at 3.5 mm uh, away from limbus. In phakics, we can insert at four mm away from limbus. Uh, so using a bewilled incision uh, technique. Uh, so uh, generally at, at an angulation, uh, we insert because uh, to form a small tunnel so that it, it acts as a self-sealing. So uh, nowadays we are not using uh, sutures to close the wounds. So to create a self-sealing uh, uh, self me mechanism, we have to insert at an, uh, at an angle. Uh, when, and, uh, when do you avoid inserting at an angle? Uh, sir, uh, if if there is already a choroidal detachment, we we are supposed to ins insert it uh, direct uh, perpendicularly. Yes, if to there is hypertony, hypertony, then avoid uh, giving a like in a bewailed type because uh, the trocar may go in the suprachoroidal space. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so always after the insertion of uh, the. Uh, Inferior, inferior temporal uh, distinct uh, trocar for infusion. We have to always uh, check uh, the tip of that uh, uh, cannula should be in the vitreous uh, uh, cavity uh, by uh, by putting the uh, endolite. Uh, so uh, so so in case if by mistake if it is if it end, ends up in uh, the suprachoroidal space, then if you infuse there uh, there can be the complication like uh, suprachoroidal detachment or even suprachoroidal hemorrhage. So always we have to ensure after uh, insertion uh, that it is in the vitreous cavity. Then uh, we have to perform a core vitrectomy to remove the central vitreous gel. 
uh, and uh, use of uh, triamcinolone acetonide can uh, aid with uh, vitreous uh, removal, especially in cases where uh, uh, posterior vitreous detachment is not present. So we'll uh, inject triamcinolone and uh, induce uh, PVD. Uh, and then uh, we have to perform peripheral uh, uh, vitrectomy and release traction over the detached retina at the retinal tears and uh, any areas of uh, lattice uh, degeneration. And again, <clears throat> again in, in these cases also, we can use uh, triamcinolone acetonide. So if uh, there are like multiple breaks or multiple traction bands or membranes are there, then we can secure the posterior pole by uh, injecting uh, uh, PFCL also after uh, uh, performing uh, core vitrectomy, uh, then uh, we can carry on with uh, peripheral uh, uh, vitreous uh, removal. Uh, then uh, 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 flatten the retina by draining uh, subretinal uh, fluid from pre-existing break or a newly created uh, drainage uh, retinotomy while performing uh, fluid air exchange, typically using uh, soft tip cannula. Uh, uh, so if there is a pre-existing break, especially near to posterior pole, then we can drain uh, the SRF through the break itself or else we can perform even drainage retinotomy. So uh, so even uh, PFCL heavy liquids like perforocarbon can be injected posteriorly to push the subretinal fluid anteriorly out through the pre-existing break. So once the retina is flattened, endolaser is then performed around the retinal break. And then uh, we can insert an intraocular tamponade uh, that, such as uh, sulfur hexafluoride, uh, hexafluoride gas, uh, which generally lasts for two to three weeks, and C three F eight, which is uh, lasting for eight weeks. So we'll inject twenty percent of uh, SF six and uh, around fourteen percent of C three F eight gas, uh, which are most uh, commonly used. And uh, in cases which require uh, uh, for a longer uh, tamponading uh, tamponade, uh, we can inject uh, even uh, silicon oil also. So generally, gases are avoided in uh, such patients uh, who cannot uh, maintain the position and uh, who can uh, who uh, who has to travel by air. Uh, so in such cases, uh, gases are avoided so, because uh, in the air travel, due to the change in the atmospheric pressure, uh, there can be sudden rise of uh, IOP and. Uh, uh, they may end up with uh, central retinal artery occlusion or even acute uh, glaucoma. So gases are avoided in in uh, in patients who want to uh, who want to have air air travel. So in such cases, uh, silicon oil is used. Also, uh, patients who are going to travel from uh, hilly area to maybe a uh, you know coastal area. Or from yes. coastal area to hilly area because when you go to hilly area, the air pressure reduces outside, yes. so gas will expand. Expand. Okay, so of course, uh, in Sangli there are no like lot of hilly areas, but uh, in places where uh, you know the hospital is in the valley and then uh, someone is staying at some town which is at the hilltop, then in such cases also it should be taken care that. Uh, he doesn't uh, move back to his town unless the gas gets absorbed. So for air travel, what is the uh, requirement? How much gas is allowed? So uh, gas should get absorbed to one third of its original level. And uh, then a uh, patient can be allowed. So ideally, maybe uh, no gas at all. But if patient has to travel, then at least it should reduce to one third. And we can also give additional medication like Dimox to make sure that the pressure doesn't rise as the gas expands. And uh, even for like uh, patients uh, uh, who are undergoing like other uh, other procedures like uh, which are required uh, uh, this thing, uh, general anesthesia and all, uh, nitric oxide uh, anesthetic agent should be avoided. Even that may interact and uh, cause uh, increased diopia. Right. Then uh, coming to extramacular traction, RD uh, may be observed without uh, surgery because in many cases it remains stationary for a long time provided proliferative retinopathy has been controlled. Uh, so, tractional RD not involving macula, generally patient is having good vision. So, in such cases, we can observe and we can uh, tell the patient to strictly control his uh, uh, sugar level. 
and in cases of combined tractional and regmatogenous rd it, it should be treated urgently even if the macula is not involved because srf is likely to spread uh, very quickly so the goal of vitrectomy in tractional rd is, is to release anterior posterior and uh, circumferential vitroretinal traction because the membranes are vascularized and the retina is often friable, they cannot be simply peeled from the surface of the retina as this would result in hemorrhage and tearing of the retina. Uh, so that's why in uh, cases of uh, uh, diabetic TRD, we give uh, intravitreal uh, anti-VEGF uh, injections prior to surgery, at least three to four days prior to surgery, uh, so that uh, uh, it will help to reduce a little bit, reduce the vascular uh, vascularization of uh, those membranes. and. Uh, which will uh, which will likely prevent the uh, intraoperative complication like uh, severe uh, hemorrhages and uh, so there are two methods of removing uh, fibrovascular membranes that is uh, segmentation and delamination so delamination involves horizontal cutting of the individual vascular uh, pegs connecting a membrane uh, to the surface of the retina so this allows complete removal of fibrovascular tissue from the retinal surface segmentation involves vertical uh, cutting of epiretinal membranes into small segments. So it is used to release circumferential vitroretinal traction when delamination is difficult or impossible. Uh, so these are the images uh, of uh, segmentation with uh, uh, vertically cutting scissors and uh, for delamination with uh, horizontal scissors. <laughs> so Nowadays here, because of uh, uh, this 25 gauge cutters which has a opening which is very close to the tip of the yeah. vitrectomy probe yeah. so we tend to use that only to uh, do the yeah. segmentation and this thing because vertical scissors yeah. also have little bit of space in the you know at the tip oh. so earlier with this, there was more space between the tip and the cutter opening so that's why yes. the scissors were more commonly used for uh, do, doing the segmentation but now because the tip is so close that we can use the same as the scissor See. so we may uh, like in cases where it's little complex we can reduce the cut rate also reduce the yeah. or uh, use minimal cut rate so use it like more of a blunt dissector and scissor See. So coming to complication here, uh, uh, raised uh, intraocular pressure. So there is over, over expansion of intraocular gas. Us usually when the concentration or volume of expansile gas is inadvertently too great. So medical measures may, uh, may be sufficient in some cases as the gas is allowed to absorb. But in very substantial elevation, a gas tap via pars plana with 30 gauge needle uh, may, may also be necessary and uh, silicon oil uh, associated glaucoma. So early glaucoma may be caused by direct pupillary block by silicon oil. This occurs particularly in uh, aphakic eye with intact iris lens, iris diaphragm. And in aphakic eyes, this can be prevented by performing an inferior, that is endo iridectomy at the time of uh, surgery to allow free passage of uh, aqueous to the anterior chamber. So uh, to relieve the pupillary block. So in aphakic, uh, uh, cases will perform this and uh, intraocular ca gas can also cause pupillary block. So late glaucoma is caused by emulsified uh, silicon oil, uh, emulsified silicon in the anterior chamber causing trabecular obstruction and scarring. So this risk uh, uh, may be reduced by early oil removal through uh, though glaucoma can uh, still occur, a glaucoma drainage device or enhanced trabeculectomy may be required. So uh, Generally, at least for uh, three months, we'll keep the oil. Then uh, we ask the patient to follow up uh, regularly. Then we look for uh, uh, intraocular pressure and then uh, manage accordingly. So these are a uh, few images showing pupillary block glaucoma, which is caused by oil uh, and uh, uh, band-shaped kerato keratopathy and even cataract are, are a few other complications. So here you can see pseudo, uh, pseudo hypopion, uh, the oil has settled into the uh, top of the anterior uh, chamber. What is the uh, treatment for band-shaped keratopathy? Sir, band-shaped uh, keratopathy, uh, we have to uh, we'll scrape the epithelium and uh, uh, we'll use that uh, chelating agent sir, to remove. EDTA. EDTA, sir. 
EDTH chelation is done after scraping off. We can also do PTK also if the cornea is too irregular. So these can be used. So uh, cataract and uh, band shaped keratopathy. So uh, gas in induced a large or long standing intravitreal gas bubble typically gives rise to feathering of uh, posterior subcapsular lens. Uh, though this is usually tran uh, transient, silicon oil uh, induced, almost all fakic eyes with silicon oil eventually develop cataract and uh, delayed uh, causes following vitrectomy, substantial nuclear sclerosis commonly develops within a year, especially if patient is over uh, 50 years of age. And uh, band uh, keratopathy is not uncommon with the extended silicon oil uh, tamponade. So generally when we use gas, sometimes post-operative day one, we see feathering of the posterior capsule. Post uh, so cataract, like you feel that lens has become cataractous. Okay. But many times it reverses after a few days. Okay. And But another thing which we have to watch for, if you feel that post-operatively cataract has developed immediately, then it, there might be a chance of lens touch. Okay, so yeah, watch on slit off. lamp if there is any lens touch. If it is, then note it down because if lenses touch is there, then while removing cataract, there is a chance of nucleus drop. Okay. Yeah. Coming to membrane peeling, to treat conditions such as aperitinal membrane, macular holes and vitromacular traction, uh, tractional retinal detachment and proliferative vitro, uh, vitro retinopathy, membrane peeling may be necessary. So as with uh, retinal detachment surgery, the initial steps of uh, uh, steps like inserting trochas, uh, performing core vitrectomy and inducing a PVD, if not uh, already present, are similar. So the degree of uh, peripheral vitrectomy performed may depend on uh, clinical scenario. So next, the attention is turned to the membrane itself that requires peeling. Uh, a different set of uh, techniques is used here compared to retinal detachment surgery. So higher magnification and resolution, uh, higher magnification and resolution lens is used. Next, a vital dye can be uh, instilled in the posterior segment to improve uh, tissue visualization. So here, uh, here we most commonly we use uh, trifan blue dye, and uh, with any uh, membrane peeling, initial flap must be created if not already present, and uh, the initial flap can be created with ILM peeling forceps, MVR blade, Tano scraper, finesse loop, or pick. This is followed by peeling of the uh, membrane from the retina. Uh, so uh, here, while uh, uh, creation of uh, uh, while peeling of the membrane, uh, we can inadvertently uh, touch the retina. It it can cause bruising and even uh, hemorrhages also from retina, and uh, uh, it can also cause ILM uh, ILM folds also, especially when removing the uh, aperitinal uh, membrane. Uh, so uh, this, this we. Are, yeah, we are not using Tripan blue commonly for uh, membrane peeling. Uh, generally, higher magnification, you can uh, see the membrane easily. Uh, we can use Brilliant Blue to stain. So generally what happens, Brilliant Blue stains the ILM better than the ERM. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. so maybe that unstained area gives that contrast, like uh, it, that might be the edge of the ERM. Okay, uh, if tripan blue is used, what is the concentration used if you want to use it for the uh, staining? No. So it's not the same as your cataract uh, tripan blue. Cataract tripan blue is 0.6%. So we have to use 2% that for the membrane. Okay. 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 Uh, so uh, this is uh, peritoneal membrane. Uh, peel using uh, intraocular forceps. Now coming to lens removal, uh, phaco emulsification or parse plana lensectomy can be performed uh, if there is retained a nucleus or cortical fra fragment causing a significant inflammation and IOP rise. For parse plana lensectomy, soft lenses can be removed uh, using vitrectomy cutter. So denser uh, lens may require use of phragmatome. Uh, phragmatome operates similarly to a phaco probe. So uh, here we can, uh, uh, we have to enlarge the sclerotomy, uh, uh, sclerotomy port by MVR blade and then uh, we can insert the fragmatome to uh, remove the uh, denser nucleus from the vitreous cavity. So 
if the lens is in the vitreous cavity first we have to do thorough vitrectomy uh, to perform uh, to to remove any vitreous attachment to the lens followed by lens removal so if uh, vitrectomy is not complete then again it may lead to complications so while removing lens the attached uh, vitreous can cause uh, traction to the retina and may lead to uh, retinal breaks or even uh, retinal detachment later so thorough vitrectomy is a must and then uh, we have to remove the lens and uh, other um, uh, method is with uh, with even forceps we can uh, bring the lens uh, uh, manually into the anterior uh, chamber and uh, the entire lens can be extracted out from anterior chamber through scleral uh, tunnel like uh, we do in sics so uh, to summarize complications uh, uh, cataract glaucoma are the uh, more commoner complications following uh, pars planar vitrectomy uh, then uh, though now the incidence have reduced but still there are uh, there are uh, chances that uh, uh, endophthalmitis can also occur especially if the if the irrigated uh, irrigation fluid or the instruments are uh, contaminated and uh, and uh, uh, one of the ways to avoid is we have to retract the uh, conjunctiva and then place the trocar uh, uh, this thing so that can uh, uh, avoid end of calmitis and uh, retinal uh, tear can occur if uh, if vitrectomy is uh, incomplete leading to the traction and the retinal tear and uh, inadvertently touching the retina uh, while uh, uh, while dissecting the uh, membranes and uh, while peeling the membranes can also lead to uh, retinal tear and uh, uh, even uh, that can also uh, lead to uh, retinal detachment later and uh, hypotony uh, uh, most commonly it is it is due to the wound uh, wound leaks uh, following surgery and uh, and even uh, after the uh, uh, vitrectomy surgery there can be ciliary body detachment also uh, which stops producing aqueous which can uh, again lead to hypotony and even choroidal detachment and uh, suprachoroidal hemorrhage uh, if uh, uh, most commonly while uh, inserting the uh, this thing to, uh, while port uh, port making if you inadvertently insert it in the suprachoroidal space it can lead to choroidal detachment and if uh, if it is severe it can also rupture the vessels in the choroid and uh, lead to suprachoroidal hemorrhage so in such cases uh, the way to manage is we have to increase the iop to reduce the hemorrhage and uh, infusion infusion cannula is uh, uh, taken out but the trocar is still kept in the place infusion cannula is taken out and it is attached to uh, another port and uh, that trocar is allowed for the uh, uh, this thing fluid to drain out in a choroidal detachment uh, and after the drainage we can uh, try to reinsert that cannula into the vitreous cavity or else we can remove it and uh, again go perpendicular and insert it into the uh, vitreous cavity <laughs> Uh, then vitreous hemorrhage and uh, cystoid macular edema and optic neuropathy are also a few comp other complications. Thank you. Okay, good presentation. Any doubts, anyone? <coughs> what uh, when I, what are the causes of post vitrectomy vitreous hemorrhage in diabetics? Sir, uh, this thing, uh, neoascularization can develop uh, again and uh, it can again replete. Any other? That is one call. Ble bleeding to the disc can be deep. Okay. So that may occur immediately post op. Okay. There can be. Both side uh, new escalation also. Oh. Okay, so it, this used to occur more commonly with 20 gauge ports, but smaller gauge maybe it has reduced now. Uh, that is one port side. So if in diabetics you are not lasered well, and uh, most of the retina is still ischemic, then patient may develop additional new escalation. Another thing is residual vitreous. So if there is an area where there is new escalation and Vitreous has not been completely removed from that area. Then uh, whenever you remove par vitreous partially, the rest of the vitreous tend to contract. So those membranes will contract or either a tractional detachment again or, uh, or there might be a hemorrhage. Okay. okay, so that's why in, even in diabetics, 
it's important that uh, you try to clear all the vitreous and membranes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.